Alright, uh, hello fellow Adanas and welcome back to the LPS Cup's 16th Finals. We have another match for you here today featuring Draco and Django who will be battling on the map Brandywine. I'm your co-host Elite Cryptic. And I am your other commentator, Chiska. Alright. There we go, I'm ready now. Uh, Cryptic, would you mind introducing the audience to Draco? Yeah, I was going to do it as it loads. Introducing Draco. Oh, I see. Alright, I'll start the game then. So I, I uh, have been playing with Draco for quite a long time. Uh, I met him back, I think, on 4.1, shortly after that patch released. Uh, shortly after the Dwarves release is when I met him, so I'm not sure what patch that was. But in any case... Okay, thank God, I thought there was a load buck there. Uh, he's very good. <laughs> He's beaten me on multiple occasions, um, although that was back when the dwarves were much more overpowered than they are now. Uh, I consider him to be a very high skilled player, highly skilled player, and I think he's going to play very well. All right, Django is a bit of a more of a mystery. He didn't uh, enter anything in the survey that players were supposed to at the tournament, but I must confess I've seen a few of his replays, and in my personal opinion, he does play. Uh, quite good, and he's quite a skilled player, especially with Mordor. Alright. Well, uh, I have some bad news for you folks watching this matchup. Um, in the previous patch, I, it might not be the case anymore thanks to the tournament patch, but in the previous one, this was a foregone conclusion Mordor won. The dwarves could not do anything to match, uh, to match the sheer amount of orcs. But hopefully, with the, with the tournament patch we are seeing, They'll, that will that will have changed. I just like to point out that Django went for two orc bits right off the bat. That took almost up all his resources. It, but he's it, it actually would have taken all his resources because each orc pit costs five hundred. Yes. Yeah, I saw that too, but I, I, I'm uh, observing Draco, so I didn't want to me mention it. Draco's right. going for a scout start. He's creeping. He's got a single uh, your standard guardian. Oh, he's getting a phalanx, so I, he, it looks like he might go for a quick creep on the troll, on his troll to the, uh, to the east. That's interesting. Mm. Still haven't seen people, uh, using the more efficient method of using your scout here and guardians to creep trolls. Very easy to do. Oh, you cut out there. You still there, Jessica? Yes, yes, sorry. My mouse just died. Oh, your mouse died. That's not good. Yes, its battery must be flat. You see, this is why you use corded mice. All right, well, I'll carry it for you while you get that fixed. Right. So we've got Django in the south. He's headed to get farms. He's got four orcs, four battalions of orcs, but no scout hero. We've got Drago just creeping. Pretty standard early game for both, both factions. Just lots of creeping going on. <laughs> right, fix that. Thanks for stepping in, Cryptic. No, no problem. Yeah, we've got a a big ass war down here between uh, the wild men and and uh, Django's orcs. <laughs> big epic battle as the men try to defend their home, but they will not be successful, I'm afraid. Interesting choice going for a phalanx. You Two phalanxes. To creep the warg. Yeah, he'll probably creep the warg and the troll simultaneously. How many phalanxes does he have? Two or three? Two. He's bought two phalanxes. Two. That's what he's done with his money. That's 600 resources. Pretty prepared. Now I see why dwarves is his favorite faction. Yes. He is very good with dwarves, believe me. Yeah, he's going to do the standard if you look up to the top right real quick. He's about to creep this troll. Now, you can do that with guardians right at the start. You don't lose any, and you still kill the troll. It saves you a lot of time and money than having to make phalanx. And he's about to creep perhaps the wargs, too. Uh, perhaps he's also just uh, making the phalanx to counter the Nazgul in the early game, or in the mid game. Uh, I suppose, but it, I think it's really mainly for creeping. I think making two phalanx is a bit excessive, though. That's 600 resources. That's not going to help him against the orc span, which is the first thing he's going to meet. Dude. But he does have ravens. If it... Oh, he doesn't have ravens. That's interesting. I, I always knew him to take ravens first because of the debuff. 
Oh, I think Tiska tapped out again for a second. Is is might still be having some issues here. Sorry. Yes. The battery I plugged in. Ah, uh, uh, you plugged in a dead yeah. battery. <laughs> yes. Oh, I'll be back Tiska. In a second. No deal. No big deal. I will. I will cover. All right. Ooh, Draco creeping very aggressively, going for the wargs, going for um, Django's wargs now. And it looks like also going for Django's troll, but unfortunately Django is going for Django's troll. He's going to perform the trick I told you about with the warriors. You just draw them with your, with your scout hero. You don't even have to hit them like that. Throw your orcs on aggressive and run them through the orcs. We've got our first engagement here. Uh, Drago's going to retreat. He knows he can't win that fight. Django about to lose. Get Django loses Gorbag. Apparently uh, didn't see that uh, his his Gorbag was fighting the troll. So that's 150 down the drain. Draco going for battle wagons. Ooh, this is going to be an interesting game. Everybody seems to think that cavalry is the answer versus Mordor. But as we saw with the previous games with, um, with Isengard... For some factions, that isn't the case. Sorry, <clears throat> I'd just like to point out, my mouse died. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please excuse myself, but it will not happen again. <laughs> hey, man, everybody makes mistakes. That's what makes humans so awesome. <laughs> well uh, said, right. I see I missed quite a lot. Yes, we've had, some, we've had some very aggressive tr creeping from Draco. He got almost all the creeps on the map, uh, the, and Django lost his... Gorbag to the troll. Really? So that's 150 down the drain. And Draco's mm. going for battle wagons. Uh, that's what I was just it's saying. Like Django decided to go for Arsenal, so I'm guessing he's trying to reduce the cost of the siege, probably. Or he might want that for fire arrows for his orcs later on. Ah, oh, yes. One of the best late game strategies with Mordor is, besides from all getting all your elite troops, you know, the Castellans, the, um, the, the Morgul Riders, the Easterlings that you can summon, the Haradrim, all those guys, you can also get uh, Overseers and throw them on some regular Orcs who can get fire arrows, and those are devastating. Yes. <laughs> you, might, you wouldn't devastating. think that Orc Archers would be so dangerous, but you put an Overseer on them, they're dangerous. Yes. Uh, how, how much is the damage increase? Like 30%, uh, I believe. Uh, the damage increase on what? The battle wagon? No, no, on um, when the overseas is combined with the archers. Oh, yeah, it's just a straight st uh, across the board stat increase of 50% on everything. Really? That and is then, incredible. Yeah, and they also get a, a um, uh, an ability that increases their damage versus enemy archers even more. Another factor which just makes Mordor unbelievably overpowered. Yes. But it does take really hoping, it does take a while to get them, so. We're really hoping for some sort of a nerf in 4.3. Oh, there will be one. Don't worry. But uh, yeah, That's we standard. see some incredible battle wagon play here. It looks like the battle wagons really did re receive a strong buff, much stronger than those war riders did. Uh, they're able to, to to really take damage now from swordsmen. Uh, Dra Django is going to need pikes quickly in order to counter those battle wagons. Battle wagon is much more useful now than in the previous version. Yeah, in the previous version, you know, you could kill Just it with dying. some orcs, you could kill it with some wild men, you could kill it with Rohan peasants. Practically anything. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like uh, Django is forced to go a bit on the defensive, already putting up three of his towers. Yeah, I think that might be a mistake. It would have been better, I think, to spend that money on pikes and getting his scout here back and go after that level five battle wagon. <laughs> How many heroes does Django, uh, I mean Draco, have on the battlefield? Uh, just Nori. Just Nori. Yep. Although Nori's probably going to be getting close to level 10 now. Oh, we've got some Nori harassing Nori. coming out from Django in the north. He's going after the mine shafts of Draco. That is a sneaky attack. Very sneaky. Very, very, very sneaky. And he's also reminds going me. after the mine shaft just to the east there. His attack reminds me of my ram spam in our little one versus one. Yes, except it's far less effective because it's made up of useless rabbly orcs. Orcs. Ah, uh, here comes the first battle wagon to save the day. That here I come to save the day. You, you can see it gaining a lot of experience. I think that might be 
that's an incredible amount of experience it gains. I think it needs uh, to ha to receive less experience, especially if it's going to be made stronger like that. Yes, no, I look agree. Look at it, one, one or two battalions of orcs, and it's level five. Five. One, one simple rush can just max it. Yeah, I, I don't like that. I do not like that at all. This is the problem I had with the patch. I mean, there's nothing wrong with trying to patch the game, but they patched, like, um, certain portions of it. So that's why I dropped out personally. But it dev there were a lot of positive patches in there that are making uh, making a big difference. I think probably the biggest difference that's been made is slowing down the recruitment time of orcs. and Not, not directly nerving their stats, but just making them recruit a bit slower. I think that was a very good uh, idea. Just back to the game, did you notice the Dale being built here to the yep, west? I did. That's a Maybe good move. Housing, good yeah. aggressive move. I would have gone for the arrow tower first, but by the by. Housing area. Well, you get some pretty good archers from the marketplace, right? From the town. Yeah. That will be a good counter against the infantry spam of Mordor. Well, the thing about that town is um, it auto repairs very quickly. It's like a. Um, it's like a, it repairs like a citadel, so if you damage it, it will right. it, it will repair to full health for free in like ten seconds, if you can defend it. Whoa! So that's why it's a very good move to aggressively put it near your enemy and build an arrow tower if you want to secure some ground early game, because it can just wipe out huge amounts of enemies. But right now, at this point in the game, I don't think it is really necessary because Draco has supreme map control already. I think well, yeah, Django's but the thing is, one or two settlements. Yeah, the thing is, though, it's super cheap to build. It can generate you a huge amount of money, and it's a very strong defensive form position for if he loses his map control. So it's sort of like a good fallback plan, I'd say. Yes. Probably uh, built it just for in case his attack failed, and he can just then pull back. Oh, that is a very serious force of orcs in the east there, going after the level 5 battle wagon. He sees those pikes in there, he knows he can't charge them. But he did summon the Dwarven Lone Axe Tower. Yeah, that thing is annoying. Especially, I, did, I think it has higher damage than Gondor's Lone Tower, because it's axes, right? Oh, he gave him a barrel, but he missed! If he had landed that barrel in the middle of that horde, that would have been devastating. Wow, demolishers already from Draco. He's really trying to shut this thing down quickly. He doesn't want Mordor to get any stronger. Well, that's what he did say in the interview. He likes to keep it quick and try to end his enemy in the mid to early game. Yes, and for you folks in the stream who didn't see the interview, it will be posted to my channel in a few hours. <clears throat> Going for some Dale archers. Or, those are Dale swordsmen, my mistake useless formation. Random group of orcs coming from the north there. They'll be killed off. I don't think he spotted Dale yet. A uh, Jango. Well, he's about to find out the hard way. Mm, unfortunately. Got a pretty serious force coming in here from Draco that could do some real damage to the enemy army. Some good battle wagon play could do, could do very well. We see the big army moving back now from Django to try and counter that dwarf army. If I was Django, I would be irritated 100% by these overpowered battle wagons. Well, I wouldn't say they're overpowered. I'd say I I think that they've got a good buff now against swords. Uh they they're still vulnerable to spears. I just think they gain experience a little too fast. That's one thing that was overlooked, I yes. think. Yes. <clears throat> um But yeah, even with all those pikes, though, he could just give them a barrel right in the middle. Mm. And it's like a wizard blast, essentially. It does a lot of damage. Will we see the halberdiers out? If he can micro those pretty good, I think he can. He might be able to easily take out the battle wagon. Yeah, the ungall halberdiers, and if he threw in a few black uruk as well, then... Uh, that would say <laughs> the battle wagon apart. If he, if he threw a couple of those in, then... Nope. Mouse gone off. <laughs> oh my he's god. He's having the same problem as me. <laughs> what is this? The no mouse stream? So it would seem. <laughs> Alright, well. These battle wagons are proving to be very sturdy, very resilient. Well, it doesn't look like his mouse is off. He's still 
microing the Zorks moderately good. Oh, he got it fixed. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, you... yeah. How far this demolisher gets? Well, demolishers are still pretty weak in general. So, wow, those are orc pikes. Those battle wagons are trampling through, and they are taking no damage. Yes, that's what I meant when saying it was overpowered. I think I'm going to agree with you on that statement now. Like, those are not even just orc pikes. They're, oh, but look at that. They're getting hits, and the battle wagon is going to die. I think with once they actually get into it and uh, yeah. be able to deal some good damage. Wow, Draco, Draco with upgrades already. Heavy armor and banner carriers. He is playing this one really aggressive. Yeah, but I think he was. Uh, I think Django was a little early in saying good game. I think his towers could really help him here. Yes, and he'll probably last a bit longer. There's that change to the siege coming into play right there. The, that demolisher will not die. Oh, the fortress will be going down the citadel. I mean, yep. This is what. This is exactly what I was talking um, about. This is one of the prime reasons that I didn't want to play because look at how powerful that siege is. It just took down the citadel in, in two hits. One battering ram in the middle of a group of swordsmen took down a citadel in two hits. Oh, and he Looks left like the game. Looks like Django's Alright, well that's going to be the first game of this match. First round goes to Draco. Django Very well played, played by Draco. Good. Yep. They both played well. Where do you think Django went wrong? Um, I think he was just a lot of time. A lot of times, he was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Like his army was off to the east, killing a mine shaft while Draco was setting up the lake town, that sort of thing. I don't think he expected such an aggressive attack from the dwarven faction. Yeah, the dwarves are a very slow faction, and that's one of the things that Draco catches people off guard with when he goes so aggressively with them. Right, I understand now. All right, well. I'm going to end this match, this recording for this match here. So for the people who are watching just on YouTube, thanks very much for watching. Be sure to rate, comment, subscribe, and share. Help the channel grow. Let's bring the Adane mod to new levels. And as always, stay awesome.